Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for attending this presentation on probability of conjunction, a novel method for anticipating future space conjunctions. My name is Tim Gruber, presenting work that was done by the MITRE Corporation, by myself, Paul Hartman, and Patrick Sable. So first question I'll answer is what is probability of conjunction? This is a mission planning metric that the MITRE Corporation has developed this year to consider current and future orbital congestion and impacts. Probability of conjunction predicts the probability that two space objects could potentially end up in proximity to each other. If you're familiar with operating spacecraft, you know, spacecraft in close proximity to each other can cause operational problems. But typically, you only get warning about seven to 10 days in advance of a conjunction. Probability of conjunction, this tool we developed, can be used when the timelines exceed the, the timelines of astrodynamics based collision prediction tools, giving operators, or more specifically, mission planners, an opportunity to look farther into the future and help design problems out. The probability of conjunction has a mission planning focus to determine the likelihood that the keep out volume around a space object is penetrated. This provides a measure of the expected number of conjunctions that may need to be managed once the mission transitions to operations. Probability of conjunction does not replace the true operational collision risk assessment tools for launch or on-orbit operations. This is an additional separate tool that's useful at the mission planning stage. To, to perform a probability of conjunction calculation, we employ static, altitude volume shells or altitude bands use a density approach to capture the likelihood that an object may land in another object's keep out volume. This is the definition of probability of conjunction. We developed some tools to do this that segment the space volume above Earth into shells based on altitude. We're able to cover any orbital regime from low Earth orbit out past geosynchronous Earth orbit, and we can use either the current catalog or future projected space catalogs to assign objects to each altitude band. This is essentially a traffic report for space, informing the users how full or congested a given orbit is or might be. On the mathematical side, probability of conjunction is defined for a given altitude band as the odds that one object lands in another satellite's keep out volume. This calculation is very simple to perform. You cal first calculate the volume occupied by all of the tracked space objects in that altitude band. The rest of the volume in that altitude band is the unoccupied volume. It's not currently reserved by tracked objects in the catalog that you're considering, whether that's a present day or a future day catalog. The probability of landing in a volume that is occupied is defined by this top equation, volume occupied over the volume occupied plus the volume unoccupied. This is the probability of conjunctions. Assuming that each altitude band's probability of conjunction values are independent of each other, you can combine the probabilities for various bands, as shown in the second equation. This is when your satellite of interest or the object of, or constellation of interest traverses multiple altitude bands. It might be a, circ a nearly circular orbit uh, that traverses multiple, multiple bands, or it might be a highly elliptical orbit. You could even consider a launch. We'll get to that in a bit. Looking at this equation, the I value denotes individual altitude band, and K is the total number of altitude bands spanned by the object of interest. Again, this is a very simple equation. This is a statistical approach to mission planning. But what we found is it works quite well. The first thing we did to, to establish whether or not probability of conjunction had realism was to compare it to combo. We selected one day where we had a, a solid catalog, we used the 2020 day 289 catalog, ran it through combo using various objects with nearly circular orbits so that stayed within one orbital band. We were able to calculate probability of collision from this and experiment with various altitude band heights and keep out volumes to evaluate the sensitivity and realism of probability of conjunction. There's a lot more detail on this in my paper, but as you can see from the plot on the left, when we ran a 25 kilometer radius sphere and compared it with the results from combo, we got extremely similar curves and what we consider to be a high degree of realism, especially considering the quality of information we were using was not really that good. We were really only considering the altitude and the number of objects. 
Encouraged by these results, we next decided to look and see if probability of conjunction could be useful for predicting safe launch window availability. For those of you who have attempted to launch recently, you might have noticed that launch windows um, are becoming a, little, a bit of a challenge on the operational side. For this comparison, we use the 2021 Day 161 catalog and the analysis tool SuperCombo. SuperCombo, of course, is a state-of-the-art tool used by the United States Space Force when they actually calculate commercial safe launch windows. By setting the altitude of uh, the altitude of concern for this was zero to 700 kilometers in probability of conjunction, we were considering a launch from multiple launch sites to 700 kilometers. And we experimented with different altitude bands and keep out volumes to find uh, a probability of conjunction that best match operational results produced by SuperCombo. As shown on this slide and much better explained in our paper, we found that 10 kilometer altitude bands probability of conjunction combined with a 25 kilometer sphere for the keep out volume gave us results that very closely replicated what we were seeing from super combo. This is pretty encouraging and very handy if you're trying to figure out how difficult it might be to launch in 2030, 2040, 2050 um, once these mega constellations proliferate. So who is POCJ intended for and what can you actually do with it? Uh, the first use case is orbital planning. Probability of conjunction can be used to plan missions for orbits to help determine a potential conjunction frequency. Uh, this information can then be used to make a lot of operational and planning decisions and is really powerful for figuring out um, things like how much Delta V you need to complete a mission or uh, what type of manning you might need on the ground station. On the flip side, you could use it assuming fixed resources and figure out what your operational lifetime might be or what your maneuvering frequency might be based on the number of conjunctions you receive. Probability of conjunction can also be used to estimate the availability of safe launch windows for future launch. Um, some of you may be experiencing a launch window crunch right now. POCJ could help you understand how much more difficult it might become in the future as constellations deploy and might help you understand uh, what type of manning or analysis tools you need to handle safe launch windows in the future. On the research side, POCJ can be used to help identify trends, develop mitigations to orbital congestion, or assess policy impacts of various changes. It's important to reiterate what POCJ can and cannot do for you. POCJ can tell you how congested an orbital altitude band is. It can help tell you how many or how often conjunctions could be expected. And it can help tell you how challenging a safe launch window might be. But POCJ is not an operational tool. It cannot tell you when a collision can, will occur. It cannot tell you what objects will pose the highest risk of collision or conjunction based on the orbit you selected. And it cannot tell you whether a specific launch window is safe. Despite these limitations, we believe that POCJ can help plan missions, though it is not useful for executing missions. As with most MITRE work, we perform our mission in the public interest. So because of that, POCJ tool uh, has been released on our GitHub. Users will be able to bring their own satellite catalog file and more information is available as far as best practices and validated settings in our paper that accompanies this presentation. Also, we can provide additional assistance to anybody who's interested in using POCJ um, for whatever the purposes are. These pictures here can illustrate the user interface and some of the outputs from POCJ. Of course, we don't perform this work in a vacuum. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the people who helped fund this and helped make this possible. Many thanks to James Hatt, Stuart Jackson, Stephen Earl, Carl Garman, and John Sloan from the FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation. And then internally within MITRE, Mr. Sean O'Neill, Dr. Ben Poole, Dr. Scott Cordella, Mr. Dante De Palma and Nancy, Nancy Erickson, thank you all for your funding, peer reviews, and constructive criticism. If you have any questions about POCJ, the methodology, or the tool, please contact myself, Mr. Paul Hartman, our Chief Astrodynamicist, or Mr. Patrick Sable, the kind of the Chief Analyst for this work. Thank you all very much for your time. Have a great day.